And a big hello to you once again and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a dandy day, week, month or year, whatever works for you. And we're going to look at this today. It is the Target exclusive Bumblebee Greatest Hits cassette pack. And it's going to be our focus in the latest Scott Bot True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, and L. And have a look for me everywhere across social media, please. And this is the Bumblebee cassette pack. It came with a one step changer Bumblebee and three of the um, Titans Return Legends class cassettes. Now, we're going to kind of start from what I think is the weakest figure in this set and go to what I think is the strongest. But along the way, there's going to be a couple of surprises because at least two of these characters have been uh, given some custom paint work. One of them to make them just more animation accurate, we'll say. The other became a completely different character. I'll explain what I mean when we head over to the table and take a closer look at these guys. And it's astonishing how something so simple can be so challenging to get when you don't live in the right place. Nevertheless, I'm really glad to have this. I've said it a couple of times now, and I'm glad to have it mostly because of this guy here, who we will get to, but of course we'll start out and look at the packaging first. And actually, it's pretty nice packaging. I mean, it actually has a nice bit of detail to it. We have that it's Bumblebee, it's the cassette pack, its greatest hits uh, only at the target sticker uh, we have what well, looks like I guess dials and stuff over here and speakers I guess over here and a speaker and bumblebee over here and of course on the back we have our product images we have the one step changer bumblebee we have Howlback who I will talk about a little bit later we have Buzzsaw and of course we have, they're calling it Frenzy. You can call it Frenzy if you want, but I am going to stick with it being Rumble because that is what I believe. You believe whatever you like, but to me Rumble is the blue dude and Frenzy is the red dude. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Nevertheless, this is the packaging, it's packaging. There's instructions, we have Two of the characters on this side, on the other side we have the one step uh, Bumblebee and the other cassette. Uh, it goes through all three modes. It's actually pretty effective instructions. These are pretty easy anyway though and we've seen the conversions before. I do find it interesting that here we have the, you know, like, I guess orange or yellow or whatever you want to call it as our kind of uh, color. Normally with Autobots we have red, with Decepticons we have purple. Here we have kind of a go between because I guess it's specifically B related. And so we're going to start out with this awful little thing. And I say awful because I'm, so, I'm sorry. One step changers are junk. They're just, they're junk. Pure junk. Um, what can I say? Paint apps, one, uh, two. Let's say, let's be kind. Let's give it a two. There's not much paint apps on it. Uh, you know, yeah, it's Bumblebee. There's a Bumblebee head sculpt that doesn't move or nothing. Um, you know, a sea of black and then a, a sea of silver. And like this... This dinky little chest flap, it doesn't tab in anywhere or anything. The entire side of the body's hollow. No knees, no nothing. One articulation. Um, the arms can go around like that and out to the side. That's it. No elbow, no bicep swivel, no knee. Uh, I mean, you can't even say the hip square to the side because that's the transformation. Like, look at, look at the... Look how small the body is and how long the legs are. I mean, really? And then the conversion, you just fold this junk up around and you like tab it to together. You put that down and this is what you end up with, with a big Autobot symbol on the top. The hood looks awful. The, there's no, like there's no window on the side. This still doesn't tab in anywhere. What, what junk this is. I'm, one, for pain, one for conversion, one for, this is a one, this, don't ever buy this for someone, it's just awful. Now let's move on to something good because this is a complete throwaway 
absolute throwaway. But I guess to tie it into the Bumblebee movie, they needed a Bumblebee. And I feel like the best thing to do is to probably go from the weakest, which was that one step Bumblebee, to the strongest. So, that being said, next in line is going to be this guy. It is Hellback. It is a reference, a repaint, a reuse of the mold that was used for Ravage and Stripes in the Titans Return line. It's not great. Really, overall, it's not a it's not a great figure. Now, I looked at Ravage in episode 143, and I kind of started him out in like his plane mode thing, and then I went to um, I think it's like his tablet mode, and then I went to robot. Now, here's the thing that I do like better here. This actually has reels on it like it's a cassette. At least the stickers that are on it are like a cassette. Again, we're using these Titans Return-ish. Um, you know, stickers that aren't, they're not, they're not great, they're not great, but I do like the blue, it's a very nice blue, and if you know Howlback, uh, apparently this kind of blue deco is, uh, I think, a version from Microman, something like that, where um, we didn't get the use in the Transformers line until later, so it was used, the blue deco was used as Hellback. And Hellback is another word for feedback, essentially, um, and kind of distortion. So it sort of matches if you know the character. And if you don't know the character, really quickly, Hellback is one of two members of the very, very elite Cobalt Sentries. There's Hellback, and then there's Garboil. And it's not the same thing as garble, though the word garble is related to it. Garboil basically means uh, confusion or distortion. So it sort of matches because the Cobalt Sentries, if you didn't know, are part of the Decepticon secret police. They're kind of in charge of, like, public safety, so to speak. So they sort of, you know, control anyone who might be a dis dissident by making them disappear or assassinating them. They also control the sort of information that goes out. Specifically, Garboil controls that information. And it might be a pack of lies. It might be just a big old pile of lies. How back here is the panther form. She is, yes, she is, um, you know, a, a blue ravage, basically. So, in terms of paint apps, I can already say this. The blue is pretty accurate, and it's supposed to be blue in like a gray, and the gray is pretty accurate. We'll see that when we get to the kind of animal mode. I'm going to say that overall, the coloration for Owlback is a 10. It's, it's great coloration. We're going to go from here to plane real quick, and then to robot. So to go to plane, and I'm not doing this as per the instructions necessarily. So, I don't know, bear with me. Um, that's the... Here we go. Here we go, this is what we'll do. So we'll turn it around this way. We bring up the uh, like cockpit section of the plane. It's a little out of frame there now, but there you go, the cockpit section of the plane. We, I'm doing this quickly because I've kind of already shown it, so to speak. We bring this out to the side. We bring this out to the side. And we fold this up and we fold this up. And then we just sort of Straighten up those legs. And this is the, like, plane mode thing. I'll back it up so we can get a better look at it. And this is the plane mode. Um, like, it's cool that it has its own kind of transportation mode. I like that. But, like, this... It's not a great mode. It's just... It's not good. We're going to quickly go from here now to the animal mode. So we can finish off the scores and move on. And we do that by basically taking the legs here and we'll straighten them out like that and we will flip out the head for now. We will take the cockpit section here and we will fold that in which sort of brings up the whole tail section. We'll fold up these pieces on the side. We angle these wing pieces back the rest of the way. We bring down this hind leg and we do the same on the other side and bring down that hind leg. Um, we come up here to the front and see if I can rotate this around. There we go. We bring that piece around like that and we do the same thing over here. We rotate this down and under. I'm probably not doing this exactly right as per the instructions, but I think we all kind of know this mold and in the end, like, boom, here we have Hellback in her 
Panther mode. I said it with Ravage, I'm gonna say it now. It's an iffy, iffy Panther mode. Um, the paint is a 10 here, or the coloration, I guess I should say, because there's not a lot of paint on it. It's mostly blue plastic and gray plastic. That's a 10. It's better than what Ravage was, because things are more accurate here. Uh, the articulation, it's an okay plane mode, I suppose. Like, in terms of being a plane here, I guess the little tail can go up and down. The back legs, like, there's a, a knee and an ankle. They can't really... I guess they can sort of wiggle in and out a bit. Uh, the front legs, they can go forward and, well, forward and back. There's a, like, a, again, I'll call them elbow, I guess. There's a little bit of ankle articulation there. Um, the head, it can go up and, like, it's... It's all right. I wish the legs could move out more. Um, it would probably be nice. I don't. You can't really bend the knee back, so you can't really get this like in a seated position. You know, it. It's not. I don't know. I don't know. For what it is, I said before, it's probably eight and a half. Like it's all right. It has most of what you want. You know, but it's not. I'm gonna say seven. It's it's. It's fine. It's functional. So we have a 10, a 7, the conversion. It, things knock into one another. It's not great. I'm saying the conversion was and still is a 6. Overall, I said that Ravage was about a 7. Hellback's about a 7. If you've been keeping track, so far we have an overall 1 for Bumblebee, we have a 7 for Hellback, and we move on now to Buzzsaw, even though we already got a Buzzsaw. And nevertheless, much like Hellback, this buzzsaw is probably more accurate than the other bu buzzsaw that we had from the Combiner Wars line, even though it was kind of looking ahead at Titan's Return at the time. I looked at Ravage back in episode 143. I looked at the original Combiner Wars buzzsaw in episode 96. And I said then that I thought the coloring on the original buzzsaw was pretty accurate because it was a yellow and black buzzsaw like laser beak basically and I said that the original buzzsaw had a coloration of nine but really what buzzsaw is is black and gold and I think that this is actually a bit closer if for nothing else in tablet mode here we do have uh, the nice kind of like tape instead of like we have stickers for tape rather than for a tablet and that is more accurate by right so if the original buzzsaw was a 9, then I'm going to say this guy's a 9.75. It's a closer buzzsaw. The transformation and the articulation will, will do the transformation. We'll go to his kind of... I don't even know what to call the vehicle mode here. We'll do that first, and then we'll go to his bird mode. Uh, for the vehicle mode here, let's see if I can remember this. We open these out, and if we turn it around, we fold these sections down, which, as I recall, are not the easiest thing. There you go. To fold down right there. And over on this side, we fold that. Actually, you know what? That folded down really smoothly this time. Uh, so we fold those down. We take these sections and fold them out like that. We take the bird legs and fold them down. We fold these so that the tires are kind of facing like toward the bottom of the bird. We fold these in and I think we were supposed to, though I didn't do it. Ah, like this. Then fold that in. There we go. That's what I didn't have done. So on this side, before I folded this down like this, I really should have folded it up, then fold it out. Then, with the leg folded down, push this in, and we get this thing. I don't know what it is. So I don't know what this is, but I like the black and the gold playing off each other, and I like that it's actually gold rather than just yellow. I can tell you that this rolls really, really well. It's There's no mold degradation. To go to his bird mode, we open these out, we flip these up over, we 
come down underneath and bring the head all the way out and then we turn the wings around this way flip in the tire section and there's a gold wing in here to bring out and we have that up over like that and this is supposed to be that piece that's like back up over the top of the birds over laser beak and buzzsaw that's usually silver. In the end, there's Buzzsaw in his official bird mode. And here he is next to the Combiner Wars version of himself. I don't know, which coloring do you like better? I thought I liked the Combiner Wars one better, but I think I like the, the box set one better. Not that there's anything wrong with the Combiner Wars one. You will notice that there's a slight transformation differentiation here. On the one from the box set, we have these back pieces pointed forward as they're officially supposed to be to mimic his kind of blasters that he has up on his back. Or you can kind of fold them back here like I have done to sort of be like tail feathers. In fact, since we got this much of the gang together, hey, why not take it one step further? And here we have him with an earlier version of himself, as well as the Titans Return laser beak. Now, originally I said that I think the one from the box set here has a coloration of 10. I said the original Buzzsaw had a coloration of 9. I looked at the original Buzzsaw way back in episode 96. I said that Laserbeak had too much black on his body. And I looked at Laserbeak in episode 142. And I said that Laserbeak's coloring was a 7.5. So all, out of all three uses of this mold, I think that the use from the Bumblebee box set is the truest and the best for coloration. In terms of articulation, the Combiner Wars, uh, Buzzsaw, the Titans Return, and now the box set one are all about a nine. I mean, there's a, a, you know, the legs can move out to the side. You can do different things with the way the, the tail end is, either have it up over his back or have it facing back as like tail fins. You can have the wings out kind of chunky like this or like they are on laser beak where they're sort of folded into the body and the piece you pull out is the like the bulk of the whole wing. So I guess technically there's a bicep swivel. Um, yeah, you know, there's, there's the head can move all around up and down. We know with this mold. So it's still a nine. The transformation I said was a 10. The transformation's still a 10. Overall, the original bust I said was uh, like a 9.5. I said laser beak was a 9. It's a solid figure. This guy is also a 9. Of course, that being said, I don't really need two buzzsaws, do I? So one of these could become Garboil. I basically took the yellow version of Buzzsaw and painted it blue. Now, it's not a perfect garboil because anybody who knows the character will realize that it's basically an entirely blue bird with, you know, highlights and details. This guy already had, you know, the stickers on him and black plastic, so I had to work with the blue and the silver as best I could. Overall, it's, I don't know, a seven and a half, maybe an eight for the character. If you know the character, if you see a blue Decepticon bird that looks like laser beak, You'd probably guess Garboil if you even know the dude. Nevertheless, I, I guess it's cool to add him to my collection. I mean, I, I wouldn't have went looking for him, but hey, why not? At least now I could say I have. The cool and cruel Cobalt Sentries for the Decepticon Secret Police. Boy, oh boy, this has been a real treat. I really thank Andrew for hooking me up with this set. It is beyond appreciated. So, so far, if you're keeping score, we've had a 1 for the Bumblebee. We've had a 7 for Howlback. We've had a 9 for Bussa. And that brings us finally to Frenzy. I think it's Rumble, but I, on the box it's Frenzy. And I get it because in the Titans Return line, we got Rumble, even though... It was the red and black iteration. You know, we all know the debate. I know what works for me. I don't understand why anyone goes against the animation. I, I, I it just, it, I don't get it. But hey, man, you do you and whatever works for you. Nevertheless, I'm just going to say this is the blue guy. We all know that one way or another, whatever you want to call him, there is a blue guy. And... I like this mold. I liked it in Titans Return. I like it now. I looked at the Titans Return version way back in episode 144. And I said then that if it's a coloration for a rumble, 
that was, a, you know, a zero, at least to me. If it was frenzy, which is what I was going with, it was a solid nine. A couple of things weren't right, like the forearms should have also been black on that. You know, a couple of minor tweaks here and there. But I said in that review, I said, hey, surely we're eventually going to get a reuse of that as Rumble or Frenzy, if you want to call him that. We're going to get a reuse as the blue guy. And I said then that the parts that are black are probably going to be a dark blue, and the parts that are red are probably going to be more of a light blue. And I said the kind of gold detailing would probably end up being silver. Well, I was partially right. Nevertheless, for the blue guy, this is pretty good. Again, I'm going to say it's a solid 9 for the color. Actually, you know what? It's not a 9. It's more like an 8 for the coloration. It's not quite as good as the red and black use. And I'll explain why when we get in robot mode. So, it's an 8. You're not going to mistake who it is. I think it's a fun mold. I like it. That being said, I'm glad that, again, we have... Uh, like cassette detailing on the uh, stickers rather than uh, tablet detailing. That works for me. What about the conversion and the articulation? Well, again, we're going to run through the conversion now. He turns into a tank first. The very first thing that we need to note is that he actually has an accessory that I didn't show independently. It's over here. It's real easy to break that off and start bending the arm up if you're not careful. So I tend to pick this off the side first and just begin to sort of bend it a bit just so I can get that end piece out. And then I'll take this little piece, it's just as blaster, I'll lay it off to the side and we have that arm off and we have this arm off and he looks like this. Let me just sort of center things a little bit. I just wanted to adjust things slightly to work. We're going to go to the uh, tank mode first and for that we take this and we bend it up. We come over here and we bend it up. We take the shoulder and turn it forward and take the shoulder and turn it forward. And you'll see that there's gold detailing of treads right here and you'll notice there's a little blue tab here. It goes down to a little space right here, same on the other side. And we have two little starts right here in the center and they will go down kind of, well, into the center here. So we bring these down the side and make sure that's in. They don't, make sure, no, that side's not quite in yet. There, make sure that's tabbed in. Now these two little starts down here, they don't particularly tab in anywhere. It's just, it's like a guide is all. And then we take our uh, blaster from earlier and there's a little divot up at the top and that goes over like, I guess in around the two spaces here, like that to give him a blue turret section. And this is him in tank mode. And over this, the years we've seen Rumble slash Frenzy be both a cassette and a tank, so I am glad that both of those are sort of homaged here. Uh, he rolls, well, he, you know, I well, he actually doesn't roll that great. He sort of scrapes on the bottom. There's wheels there, but just listen. You can tell something is scraping. It, I, it's not a big deal, whatever. I'm fine with it. Not a big deal. Um, easy to get here though. So we're going to go from this to robot mode now. So we will go now to his robot mode. And to do that, we begin by removing this piece and lay it to the side because that's just his, his blaster. We can untab the arms really from the little divots and bring them out to the side and straighten them up like that and bring the whole shoulder down and the whole shoulder down and we'll sort of stand them up like this. We'll bring these shoulders up over his head because it's the easiest way to deal with this right now and then we will take the leg and the leg out to the side. We're going to straighten them down, turn at the knee, turn at the knee and flip up the toe and we can stand this guy up and once we stand this dude up we can turn his arms forward like that, open up his chest, and finally, last but not least, flip out his head, and we have the 
blue guy now, we can take his little blaster piece and there's a hole over here on the side. Of course you can put it in his hand if you want, but we can lay it right there. And this is the blue guy, whether you want to call him Rumble or Frenzy, in robot mode. I said that the paint apps were an 8 because you will notice that his eyes are still blue, that his chest is still uh, gold. So there's a couple of minor, minor things that by rights we should rectify. Ah yes, and there we go. That seems a little more correct. I had said that the paint apps originally were an 8 because he had uh, gold detailing on his chest and his shins and his eye visor was blue and that's fine if you want to leave it like that but I decided to make him look a little more animation rumble accurate by uh, changing the detailing to silver and giving him red eyes I'm not going to pretend it was easy because it wasn't it's it's a lot of work now I looked at the uh, original Titans Return uh, black and red lad uh, the one who came out released as rumble uh, some time ago in episode 144, and I said then that the paint apps on him were really a 9 if it's a representation of Frenzy, or at least Frenzy from the animation. Because the kind of shoulders on that guy are black and his arms are red. Really, his kind of shoulders and biceps should be red and his forearms should be black, basically. With this guy, it's much the same sort of thing. Even with these kind of customizations done, his uh, shoulders that are the dark blue should really be the color that's on his forearms. And his upper arms and shoulders should be the light blue by rights. Nevertheless, I don't think you're going to mistake who this is. I'm going to say it's still a 9. The conversion on the original I said was a 9. I'm going to say it's a 9 here again. And the articulation on the original, I said, was an eight and a half. Well, it's an eight and a half here as well. Pretty simply put, we have a head that can go left and right and look up and down a bit, though it might move his chest somewhat. The arms, both of them can go all the way around, can go way out to the side. We have a bicep swivel. We have 90 degrees at the elbow. We do not have a waist which I suppose is a bit unfortunate. We do have legs that can do splits all the way. Uh, they can kick forward. They can kick back. We have a very deep knee bend. By rights, I suppose we can swivel because of the ball joint at the knee. We have toes that can tilt. Um, and I showed this with the original. I'll, I guess I'll show it here now again as well. You can also straighten that piece out and straighten that piece out and turn and turn and it kind of, see if I can, see if I can do this. It's meant to kind of sort of mimic his pile drivers. Again, articulation eight and a half overall, this guy is a solid nine. And here's Rumble and Frenzy next to each other. I'll let you decide who you see as Rumble and who you see as Frenzy. Either way, I think we know this classic duo, and this looks like a pretty great representation of both of them. Say cheese, oh little Soundwave family, or a rather large Soundwave family. I do see a couple of glaring errors. Uh, it'd be nice if we had, uh, or I guess I should say glaring omissions. It'd be nice if we had a Rat Bat. Uh, kind of done in this motif, besides for that FOC one. It'd be nice if we had, uh, like, Slugfest, for example. You know, there's a couple there, but I think a lot of the Cardinal ones are here, including the Cobalt Sentries. This is my representation now of Soundwave and his minions. It works for me. Obviously, you have to decide what works best for you and your collection. But this box set that we've been talking about now as a whole, so this group, on the whole, is a pretty good set, I must say. Now, granted, Bumblebee is a complete throwaway. The only reason he was included is because it's a Bumblebee set and you had to include a Bumblebee. Um, throw that away. Uh, in terms of the three cassettes, yes, the reuses of those Titans Return tablet type of molds, but I never had a particular problem with those. In fact, I rather enjoyed them because they were better than the FOC versions. 
And it was nice that they kind of had their own means of propulsion, transportation, whatever you want to call it, be it a tank or a plane or some weird thing with cow catcher spikes on the front. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that thing is that the birds become. Hellback overall is a 7. It's not a particularly great mold and I would never ever have bought it. I, you know, I got Ravage. I never did get stripes and I wouldn't have this other than it came in the set. Uh, same with Buzzsaw really. Like it's a fine mold and now this will be my Buzzsaw but I was perfectly fine with the Buzzsaw I had. It's just again because it was in there, oh well, I guess it will work out. The real selling point for this set is that blue guy. Whether you call him Rumble or Frenzy, they call him Frenzy on the packaging. Um, but the, the blue guy to go with the red and black guy is the real selling point for this entire set. There's no doubt about it. Is the set overpriced? Absolutely. It is a blatant and kind of gross, disgusting cash grab. But, but, that being said, you do get a fairly good set for what you are paying. And granted... As I say that about the cash grab, you do get three figures that, you know, do the math kind of for what a regular um, Legends class price would be. Uh, you know, look at what the cost is of a one-step changer. I know that those things are minimal. And then throw on the kind of, you know, exclusive tag and that, that kind of accounts for the other few dollars. I get where the pricing came from. It's just, you know what, we should have got... The blue guy a long time ago at just regular retail, and maybe the set never should have really existed. That being said, I'm glad I have it because while B is a 1 and while Halback is a 7, Buzzsaw and Frenzy, or Rumble, are both 9s. They're great figures. They were great figures a few years ago. They're still pretty great representations of those characters today. Arguably. People will enjoy the Siege better and are definitely looking forward to a uh, rumble and frenzy coming out there. I would think it's a foregone conclusion. I would also think that they will have certain limits to their articulation to fall in line with being the whole Micro Master size class. And because they would have limits to their articulation and likely just become those cassette shield things, I think I kind of prefer these guys a bit better because they have better articulation and, like I said before, their own means of propulsion. Is this a necessary set? Probably not, but I'm glad to have it nevertheless. And here we are once again, and like, yes, this is an overpriced box set because really only one of the four uh, characters is someone that I think the fans are really going to want. First things first, this one step Bumblebee is garbage, it's trash, I've said it a hundred times, if you want to save uh, development dollars, you want to cut down on production costs, you want to hand those savings on to the consumer, then stop making trash like this. It's garbage. Don't buy it for anyone. Don't buy it for your kids. It's awful. There's no articulation. Uh, there's. It looks terrible. It's hollow. It feels cheap. It looks cheap. The roof doesn't tab in anywhere. When it's the chest, it doesn't tab in anywhere. It's garbage. It's not worth the plastic it's made out of. Um, we, the three uh, Titans Return Legends class cassette bots, we'll call them, they're as fine as they ever were. I mean, the Ravage mold is pretty weak, though it does look pretty slick in blue. Um, the Buzzsaw hair is indeed nice, and I'm really cool with kind of repurposing my Combiner Wars one into Garboil, so that now I have the kind of at a left field Cobalt Sentries, but the real star of the show here, and I think the one that most people would want, is the Blue Lad. Now, whether you call him Rumble or Frenzy, and the other guy Rumble or Frenzy, is up to you. I go by the animation. And in the animation, Frenzy, who was the red and black lad, uh, did have gold detailing, and Rumble, who we saw all the time as blue, did have silver detailing. Now, granted, the gold here is a tampograph, and it's nice, and it's crisp, and it's clean, and I did paint it over with silver. That's probably not quite as crisp and clean, but it works for me. I can certainly see the argument where a lot of people would say, no, I'm just leaving the gold, and I'm not going to mess with it. Is this an overpriced box set? Yeah, definitely. Sure. Obviously. But to kind of be able to fill out my Soundwave family photo the way I want to fill it out, I'm okay with it. It's definitely the sort of thing that unless you are looking for this blue guy, there's not really a need to pick it up. And if you're kind of holding out hope that Siege is going to cover you on a rumble and frenzy basis, well, 
I guess time will tell. Nothing's been announced as of this recording, but we'll see. Even if that's the case, I still think that this mold that was used in Titan's Return for Rumble and Frenzy is still a solid Legends class figure. Anyway, let me know what you think about this box set, and let me know if you think I'm being too harsh on the one-step changer. You know, I'd love to hear from you guys, as always. Thanks for dropping by and giving me some of your very valuable time. Hey, before you leave, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out so very much, and I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.